So we're going to be taking a look at a USB 4G LTE advanced modem from thinkpenguin.com. So the model number on this modem is TPE-USB 4G LTE. So this modem is a modem that's designed for GNU Linux and free software operating systems. It's one of the best supported modems on the market for GNU Linux users and actually um, many different other operating systems as well. So there's actually two different chips that are used depending on which version uh, you get will determine whether or not it's uh, gonna work and where it's gonna work. So the LT4120 chip works in North America primarily and the EM7455 works primarily outside of North America, although there's some overlap between the two, but your service um, support will, will be le greater or less depending on you know which chip you get. So the LT4120 primarily should be used by people in North America and the EM7455 should primarily be used by people in other countries. So the EM7455 has potentially got speeds up to 300 megabits per second. The LT4120 potentially has speeds up to 150 megabits per second. This is going to highly vary depending on where you are, which provider you have, and so forth. Um, for example, AT&T resellers, the bandwidth is primarily prioritized for AT&T direct customers. So if you're on a reseller like PureTalk, you won't potentially all the time get the speeds that you can if you were an AT&T customer directly. It's one of the things you should look at. Um, other factors that you'll wanna consider are, for example, the antennas that you can get with this modem. So there is 4G optimized antennas, which will potentially give you a little bit better reception if you're on the edge of reception. Um, so that's definitely something to, to consider. Uh, in our offices, for example, we are definitely on the edge here. So those uh, 4G antennas help. Now, there are some other interesting aspects of this modem. So for example, this is one of the few USB 4G modems, at least with the LT4120 chip, that will actually still work on Verizon's network. Verizon has decided to discontinue support for devices that don't have a 4G, uh, basically, voice capability. Um, and it, it basically the way the system used to work is there was dedicated channels and I believe it's now going to a data packet uh, based voice. So it's, it's a very confusing thing, but they've decided to select which products effectively um, can be activated on their network and pretty much none of the USB 4G modems will, well are on this list. <laughs> so you actually pretty much don't have a choice here. Um, you, actually, you have to upgrade to a newer phone um, that is in their list of devices that they'll activate. Now this actually LT4120 chip won't activate either if you try to activate it in store, but at thinkpenguin.com you can find directions for how to activate online. And it is a certified device, so it shouldn't be a problem. Now there's lots of certified devices that won't activate anymore um, because of the switchover that's happening, but this is one of the few that actually will. So um, continuing on, um, if you are going with Sprint, another aspect is that you may need to use the EM7455 rather than the LT4120, um, but for all the other major providers and resellers in North America, the LT4120 is generally the one you wanna go with. Now that doesn't mean that you won't be able to use um, both chips uh, for that matter in other parts of the world necessarily, but the bands that are supported by each of the chips um, are may or may not be supported depending on where you are in other parts of the world. So that's one of the reasons why uh, LT4120, North America, EM7455, if you're outside of North America. Um, so there are other aspects of this modem that are interesting. So there is support for embedded operating systems that require QMI. QMI is basically one of two standards. There's MBIM, which is a newer standard that works uh, for desktop operating systems. And then there's QMI, which is an older standard. Um, the QMI is supported by embedded devices, but it, the embedded devices generally don't have support for the MBIM mode yet. So if you are looking to connect this to a router, you can select QMI mode when you check out, and then it will, uh, it still requires some amount of setup when you get it, but 
it is much easier to set up. And then if you are using it on a desktop operating system or any modern operating system, in fact, um, you'd want to select MBIM mode because uh, once it's in MBIM mode, it'll work with pretty much any modern operating system out of the box, uh, desktop wise anyway. Now there's a lot of modems on the market actually that have technically MBIM mode support, but because they don't default in the firmware to MBIM mode, they actually don't work anymore because in Windows there's a proprietary driver that's required to use them. And so you'd actually have to um, have a, a, a ver an older version of Windows in order to use the drivers that are made available. And the newer versions of Windows don't have those drivers so they can't switch it over to the MBIM mode. Now there may be a hack to make it work somehow on some of these modems, but this modem will actually work out of the box. So that's one of the, the good things about this modem um, versus just random other modems. Um, it works also reliably. So every time you plug it in, you know, you don't have to worry about losing support. So we're going to now take a look at, uh, do a quick speed test here. This is a pre-recorded video here, um, but um, it will give you uh, the most optimal, under the most optimal circumstances, what you can potentially get. Now, this might, you might be able to get a little bit better than this. 235 um, for the down and up to 50 for upload is, is probably the max under the most optimal circumstances, at least with the EM7455. You probably won't be able to get anywhere near that with the LT4120. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we're going to take a look now at how easy this modem is to connect to a desktop system. It literally is just a few uh, clicks of a button. So this is on KDE, but it's just as easy and maybe even easier on GNOME and other desktop environments. So in KDE, the very recent version, you just right click on the network app, and it's pretty much the same for other distributions and desktop environments. And then go to configure network connections. It might say something slightly different, but it's gonna be very similar. We're gonna click on the little plus arrow, select the mobile broadband wizard, click create, click next, click next, select AT&T. There is no, um, there's no password. The defaults are all good here. So I'm gonna hit save, click okay, and it is going to down here connect and it has so as you can see inside the building the, the connection is kind of weak uh, we're on the edge of service here now i'm going to just go to info sniper.net and you can see here that we are in fact connected through at&t now and there's no other ethernet or wireless connections on this system so it uh it works very, very well. So that's the summary of this video. If you want to check out the product, again, just go to thinkpenguin.com. If you have any questions, thinkpenguin.com support. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any more technical questions or distribution or release specific questions.